Welcome to Stuff in Whiskey. I'm Josh. And I'm Aaron. And we're back with another Totally Blind Head to Head where we react to the pours and the prices before we find out what we're drinking. If it's an available product, is it worth the money? If it's hard to find, is it worth the hype and the hunt? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome to the channel, bringing a real world perspective to the real world whiskey consumer. Today, we're gonna randomly select one of these pairings from our blind sample pool and taste two of the pairs, or one of the pairs, two of the glasses, totally at random so that you get our honest opinion on what's in the glass, separate and apart from any hype or bias. In the end, we'll give each pour what we call a real world score, which is based on what we learn from the blind tasting, as well as once we find out what we're drinking, the price and the availability, and most importantly, whether we would actually spend our money again on what's in the glass. If that sounds good to you, we do these head to heads once a week and uh, it'd really help us out if you went ahead and liked this video. And while you're there, you can subscribe so you don't miss any of these in the future. And if you like blind tastings, be sure to check the video description below for a link to our Patreon. Over there, we have our community element of the channel, but it's also where you can get a little bit more interactive with the channel. And like I said, if you like blind tastings, you can do some blind tastings with us some blind flight nights that we do with our community, sample swaps, giveaways, all kinds of stuff. You can find that down there. Also, if for some reason you want any Stuff and Whiskey merch, we do have a store. Josh is yeah. sporting a little merch right this here. This is my new favorite shirt. I, I'm never gonna wear another yeah, one. Yeah, he bought many in multiple colors, so be prepared to see them a lot. Yeah. Um, but go ahead and head on over to stuffandwhiskey.com to see those. All right, let's run our randomizer and see which one of these pairs we're tasting today. I gotta hit it. Two. Two. Cool. Easy. We don't have to count today. Right here. <laughs> All right. We're going to get these poured and we'll be right back with our first impressions on both of the pours. All right. Let's get in the glass one. Cheers. Cheers. I'm getting like a pink runce on this. Like very sugary sweet. Yeah. I'm definitely getting a very sugary sweet fruit forward profile on this as well. Kind of like mm -hmm. a fruit candy. It's to me, it's really, you say pink runts and I get that. Mm -hmm. It's very apple-esque to me, mm. like an apple-y taste, but like green and red apples. And okay. it smells really syrupy. It smells really nice on the nose. Yeah. Let's get into the palate. This tastes like a pink runt to me. I'm, the, what I smell is what I'm tasting. Yeah, you're not wrong. Like that flavor is intact, mm -hmm. but on the first sip at least, I'm a little disappointed because it smelled really rich on the nose. Like there was a lot of sweetness on the nose and it came across just a little thinner and a little bit more watery on the palate than I wanted it to be. Like I just wanted a little bit more from it, but that's just the first sip. And this is our first sip of the day. Uh -huh. So let's get into sip number two on the first glass. So I'm getting the same kind of pink runts flavor, but maybe a little bit more wood oak on the back yeah. the second time around, just a little bit more. Yeah. So the sweetness that's there is kind of right, right in the wheelhouse of what we said, but I tend to get more oak on the second sip mm -hmm. and I'm definitely getting some woodiness on the second sip there yeah, on the back end. Sure. It's not as thin on the second sip. Like it's kind of coming around a little bit more. So I didn't think it was thin at all ever. It's, I mean, it doesn't seem like it's super high proof to me, I, I guess is what I'm saying. Okay. It's not, blowing my face off yeah. with proof and flavor. It's fairly delicate and nuanced. Okay. You know, good good quality pour. All right, let's get into glass two on the nose and see what we're working with. This smells like grassy goodness. <laughs> grassy goodness? It smells kind of earthy. Yeah, it's got some earthiness there. It's got a little bit of like a, a nutty, earthy profile to me. Also smells really sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, smells quite nice on the nose. Let's get into the palate and see what we're working with. I think I got nuttiness. Yeah, it's there. I don't ever get that, but it tastes kind of like a peanut that rolled around in the dirt. Yeah, I can see you there. It's definitely got some nuttiness, some kind of corn sweetness, Maybe. like kind of a dusty corn. It's really good on the palate yeah. as well. It, it has the, the viscosity that the first glass was lacking on the first sip. It's here on the first sip in this glass. Really? But I don't know if that's because We've kind of acclimated just a couple of sips of whiskey now. We need to get into another sip on this to find out. Yeah. Peanut taking a dirt bath. Peanut taking a dirt bath. Yeah, this is very candy bar-esque to me. I'm not mad at it. Like a payday candy bar. Chocolate, peanuts, maybe a little bit of caramel in there. 
Quite good. Okay. Yeah. We're going to take some time, clear our palettes out, start with the second glass, go back to the first, A, B, compare them, and we will be right back with a proper assessment of how these compare to each other. After spending some time with both of these pours, what do you think? Let's start with glass one. Okay. So for me, glass one gets a thumbs up on the nose, just okay on flavor, but a thumbs up on overall experience because I did like it. Okay. Glass one for me gets a thumbs up on the nose, thumbs up on the flavor, just okay on the overall experience. Okay. Let's get into glass two, and then we'll talk about how these compare. Okay. So where you at on glass two? So for me, glass two gets a thumbs up on the nose, thumbs up on flavor, thumbs up on experience. Okay. So thumbs up across the board. For me, glass two gets a thumbs up on the nose, thumbs up on the flavor, just okay on the experience. Mm, okay. So it seems like glass two rated a little bit higher for you. They rated the same for me. Yeah. You had a preference for glass two? I did have a slight preference for glass two. So I gave glass one just okay on flavor. Not because it wasn't a bad flavor. It was just okay for me because it was a little too sweet for me. Yeah. So that's why I said it was just okay. If you like sweetness, then like if I had liked sweetness on my whiskey, I probably would have given it a thumbs up. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I did have a preference to glass two as a little more earthy, which I tend to like. We talked about this in the first impressions, but the earthiness was that like nuttiness and the way that the oak interacted together, I think that it's coming across for both of us, like Maybe, a little bit know. darker in flavor profile. I don't even know if it was darker. It just tasted earthy, yeah. like my, out the outdoors. <laughs> my notes were glass two is a baby Ruth and glass one is sweet tarts. So it's really depending on what candy you like more. But see, that is not true because I would pick a sweet tarts over a baby Ruth well, in real life. What candy, you, what candy you like more in your whiskey? Okay. So like, do you like more of like a sugary sweet profile? like? this or do you like more of like a candy bar chocolatey peanutty profile like this okay and the the kid inside of me loves candy bars yeah and i definitely gravitate more towards to that in whiskey so for me these are they scored the same mm -hmm. on the blind tasting portion i just have a slight preference towards glass too it's something i could reach for all the time and I, my only knock on it was that it's just, it just seems to be low proof and, and you like I proof. just want more proof there. Whereas glass one to me kind of came across a little thin, not dissimilar to glass two, yeah, they both but there was the like same. a little bit of like an aspartame, like diet cola. There was like a fake, like a zero. A fake sweetness there. Yeah. There was an, it was an aftertaste. Mm -hmm. Like even the, I even really paid close attention to the oak on glass two and it was really nice, but there was just like this that that aspartame kind of mm -hmm. aftertaste there one. as well on glass one yeah mm -hmm. so to me that that is ultimately what pushed me towards glass two but very similar experiences mm -hmm. they just come at the flavors from two different angles mm -hmm. but the experience overall in both glasses is very similar i can't wait to find out what they are i personally hope they're both about 30 dollars. they're both readily available that's about what this flavor profile should net you in my mind yeah. and if that's the case i'm a buy for both of them but let's find out what we've been drinking all right we're going to find out how much these cost first yes then find out what we've been drinking so we both had a slight preference towards glass two okay. or i had a slight preference towards glass two you had a i had a slight preference a decent I, preference a decent preference i glass one is good i just don't like sweet whiskey okay so glass number one is number 49 let's okay. find out how much it costs i 40. said 30 bucks 49, 49 is $45. Okay. So a bit more than I want to spend on well, that experience. Same. Glass number two, number 50. $20. Oh, well, we both preferred that. So that's an easy yeah. take number two and run. Yeah. All right. Let's find out what they are. Okay. What's glass one, number so 49. 49 is Elmer T. Lee. <laughs> <laughs> What's glass number two, number 50? Evan Williams, 1783. <laughs> Oh, they're both, they're that's both, awesome. They're both 90 proof as well. That's awesome. Yeah, I thought they were about 90 proof. And yeah. like a good quality 90 proof pour to me, a bottle should be about 30 bucks. Yeah. So, man, this is super interesting. Yeah. And I'll say, I'll go ahead and just say why I think this is super interesting okay. because we got this bottle of Elmer T. Lee through just loyalty to a local store and they happen to have one in and we've never had a bottle of it before. So we got it and put it in some blind head to heads outside of channel content. And one of the things that it's gone up against is Evan Williams, 1783. 
and Elmer T. Lee has lost every time. Really? <laughs> to 1783. So I was like, okay, that's single blind though. Like we know that those products are in those glasses. Uh -huh. What happens when it's double blind? And we don't know. So this is gonna Still be a really thing. interesting consumer discussion, yeah. but I'd like to say I'm surprised, but I've already been surprised by this matchup several times off the channel. Uh -huh. So I really can't say that I'm surprised right now. This did strike me as Buffalo Tracy. I like, have no idea what Buffalo Trace tastes like, so cool. Well, this uh, Elmer T. Lee's made by Buffalo Trace. 90 proof, nobody knows the age. It is a single barrel, so they can vary, mm, but okay. We have had Elmer T. Lee before in our first sip, and then we've also had it out at a bar before. This is on profile okay. for Elmer T. Lee. So 1783 though, what up with 20 dollars? 20. This in our market's actually $13. Oh. But I think in a lot of markets it's 20. Oh wow. So I put 20 okay. in the key. And Elmer T. Lee is is actually $43, but okay. something hyper specific like that would tip me off to what it was mm. when you told me the price. So 45. I didn't I put 45. Um but in a lot of markets, this sells for like $300 or more. Oh my. We'll talk about that here when we get into our consumer discussion okay. because this is a fascinating matchup. Let's get into it. So our consumer metrics are retail and consumer scores respectively, retail being the retail side of the equation, the price and the availability, and then the consumer side of the equation as consumers, would we actually spend our money on these products and buy them again or not? With that said, where are you at on Elmer T. Lee? $43 if you get it at retail, mm -hmm. but honestly in our market and most markets out there, it's completely unobtainium. It's in our market, it's a year end lottery item. Okay. And it is getting marked up to like $300 in some stores around here. And it goes for secondary on, at $300 wow. as well. Okay. So. Glass number one, Elmer T. Lee, where are you at? Well, the retail price of $43 isn't horrible, yeah. but the fact that you can't get it is horrible. So I give it a thumbs down yeah. on retail score. But if you walked into a store and you saw it sitting in front of you for $43, $42.99, would you buy it? Um, No, I would not. Thumbs down just because it's not my flavor profile. It's too sweet for you. It's too sweet yeah. um, and I would not buy it. For me, I'm going to give it a thumbs down on retail as well. It's silly. It's literally silly what this goes for <laughs> it tastes like a 30 dollars bourbon and people are paying 300 for it it blows my mind yeah but would i buy it again or not if i saw it for 42.99 again thumbs up yeah i don't love that thinness and that aspartame kind of yeah. aftertaste yeah but there are occasions where i would love to have this as a 90 proof pour but i'm not going to cry myself to sleep if i can't get my hands on it Let's shift gears and go over to Evan Williams 1783. Okay. In our market and pretty much every market out there, it is very readily available. Yeah. Should be, I've heard it as high as $19.99 okay. in some markets, but in our market, it's $12.99 for a 750 milliliter. And That's it is stupid good. it is on shelves literally everywhere. Yeah. Like we can we can stock up on this if we wanted so to. So I don't want to stock up on it. Well, no. I wouldn't stock up I on it. I don't want to stock no. up on it. It's no. But it gets two thumbs up for retail score for yeah. the availability. Awesome price. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then I, I mean, we're kind of I tracking mean, here. But yes. It's on the shelf in front of you. Two for thumbs up. Bucks. I would buy it again. Well, I 20 think, bucks. Say 20 bucks. Because it's 20 bucks. 20 in some bucks. Markets. Yes. Hands down. I would buy it again. I think it's a great one to have in your arsenal of whiskey because you can. It's cheap enough that you could mix it with things yeah. and you don't feel bad. And it's also good enough where you can drink it on its own. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's going to be two thumbs up on retail as well. The price is so good and the availability is so good. There's no headache around this bottle like there is this bottle. Yeah. And yeah. there's a lot to be said for that in our in our mind. Like we don't like hunting. So if you do, then maybe you want to go on the hunt for Elmer yeah, T. Lee. Yeah, that's true. Now, would I buy this again for 13 or even 20 bucks? Thumbs up. I'm not going to give it two thumbs up because I would prefer more proof. And I really... If, if it weren't for the channel, I probably wouldn't buy anything under 100 proof. Like but in I my would, personal life. so you would have would. to buy it for me. You know what? But like, honestly, <laughs> this is really my go-to 90 proof pour. Mm. Like the price is low and the quality of the liquid inside the bottle is very high. And so I don't want to spend a lot on a 90 proof bottle. I'm probably going to gravitate to this. Mm. This is going to be my go-to yeah. for like an easy summer sipper or something like that. You really can't beat the value on 1783 and it just knocked off a supremely hyped up allocated yeah. bottle that's a lottery item in our market. 
We get our real world scores by adding up the thumbs you see on the screen. There are 10 possible points available, but this ain't Elmer or Evan's 10 point scoring system. Nope, it's more like a bell curve. We found out through all the blind tastings that we do here on the channel that most things tend to fall in the middle when you don't know what you're tasting. Mm -hmm. So for our grading system and a 10 point score, really that four to six range is kind of a catch all. Yep. You really have to be outside of that on the low or high end to be exceptional or Un unexceptional <laughs> as the case were. Yep. So with that said, let's get into our scores here. Hey. Elmer T. Lee, highly coveted from Buffalo Trace. Where are you at on real world scores? I've said this probably in a couple of videos, but don't come after me in the comments. Everybody has their own taste preferences. Everyone has their own taste preferences and whiskey is subjective. The end. Right. Elmer T. Lee gets a 2.5 for me. Yeah. And Elmer T. Lee gets a 3.5 for me. Yeah. And this is totally blind. We didn't know we, we didn't were know. drinking Elmer T. Lee. So And I just don't like sweet. And if you're out there feeling FOMO over Elmer T. Lee, you just saw how it hit two people who really enjoy good whiskey. Yeah. And it didn't knock our socks off when we didn't know we were drinking it. So yeah. there's something to be said for that. We'll get into that more in a minute. Let's get on to 1783 for real world scores from Evan Williams. Where are you at? So I was surprised that it got as high as it did. It got a seven out of 10 for me. Yeah. That availability and price really helps that. For, for me, it gets a 5.5 and I think that's about as high as something that's 90 proof could possibly score for me. It's still within that four to six mid range point, but man, it's such a good quality pour yeah. for what you're getting. I, it, it's really hard to argue. And granted, the availability and the price helped Evan Williams and it hurt Elmer T. Lee. And we, we hear that in the comments. But that's but, the whole picture of buying whiskey. Right. We care about availability and we care about price. So yeah. if you're somebody out there that doesn't care about either one of those things, then probably just pay attention this to the probably tasting portion. isn't the channel for you, honestly. Probably not. We're not for everybody and yeah. that's totally fine. But you can watch just the tasting portion and see what we think mm -hmm. without that. But yeah. if you actually care about the money that you spend on the products that you're getting and you don't have the time and you don't want to go through the headache of the hunt, then... You know, that stuff matters to you. It matters to us. And if you're not subscribed, you probably already should be. But this isn't a shameless pitch right here, although it kind of was. Let's get <laughs> into who these two pours are for, because that's a discussion in and of itself. To me, these are both for, for kind of two different people. Like yeah. if you really like sugary sweet stuff, then Elmer T. Lee yeah. would be a good pour it's for good. you. It's good. It's decent. But totally blind, I really don't find that it rates any better than just standard Buffalo Trace, personally speaking. Now, Evan Williams 1783 is a different ball of wax because of the price and the availability. Yeah. The value is so high on this product that if you like a really classic bourbon flavor profile mm -hmm. with your caramels, your vanillas, your oak. But you get a little- Some of the chocolateiness. You get a little nuttiness, you get a little earthiness. You yeah. kind of have like a well-rounded package of yeah. all of the things, I feel like. And then it's wrapped up in a very inexpensive price, which for me- it's Hard to beat. Plays a huge role in my buying decisions, personally yeah. speaking. So if you're value conscious, this is very hard to beat. And if you like that candy bar kind of mm -hmm. profile, this is also very hard to beat. If you like sugary sweet, check out Elmer T. Lee. If you can't find it, don't stress too much because like I said, I think this Buffalo Trace's products, they're just making whiskey. They're not doing anything particularly special over there. That's like saying that, you know, th or this cereal is better than that cereal and they both look like Honey Nut Cheerios, but yeah. like one's this brand and that's the other brand. Like that's literally what Buffalo Trace is doing. It's a major distillery making good quality whiskey as is Evan Williams at Heaven Hill as are so many other distilleries out there. So if you can't find Elmer T. Lee, don't stress out about it. You're not missing out on too much, yeah. at least in our opinion. But what do we know? We're just judging the glasses based on blind tastings, not the labels or the hype behind them. But what we do know over here is that we have a ton of fun doing these blind tastings. And if you like doing them too, again, comment, subscribe. If you tried both of these, particularly blind, let us know what you yeah. think. Or if you've just tried them not blind, let us know what you think of either one of them. Absolutely. And while you're down there, go ahead and check out the video description and you'll find our email address over there. We do a charity event every October. We're getting the word out early and often. Mm -hmm. This is like our other stuff. We do other stuff in our Tuesday episodes where we mix things up and talk about non-whiskey related stuff. But on our head to heads, our continual other stuff is our charity fundraiser. Yes, and we raise for money for to write love on her arms, which yeah. I'm wearing a shirt from them today. Absolutely. So last year we raised 15,000. This year we're trying to double it. 
And I say we, meaning the whiskey community, community as yeah. a whole. We host, but it's really the community bonding together and raising a bunch of money for an organization that provides hope and help directly for people in need. So if you want more information or if you would like to donate a bottle to the cause, hit us up at the email address in the description below. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Till next week. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome to the channel, bringing a real world perspective to the real world whiskey consumer. Today, we're randomly selecting one of these pairs of samples from our blind sample pool to taste without any, let you know. <laughs> taste blind. <laughs> tasting, you're gonna taste the things after we do the tastings. <laughs> that way I'll know it doesn't, doesn't go doesn't anywhere. Doesn't fit anywhere. I was like, what is she doing? And I'll probably look at it and be like, what's happening? Why is she so crazy? 5'8". Who did I marry? Yep. Oh, I know who I married. Do you though? The best girl in all the land. Oh, shucks. Like Expe a peanut that rolled in the dirt. Yeah. But they know what that means. Right. Do they though? <laughs> you can imagine what that means. Okay. There's like a handful of Jolly Ranchers or a Snickers bar. Like, this is no contest. Yeah. Like there is no hard candy that could compete with like a Snickers or a Milky Way or and a Twix. And I probably, uh, Twix is, I do like Twix a lot, but I probably, if Twix it was a slap, a Snickers or a Jolly Rancher, actually Snickers or the big sweet tarts, I'd pick the big sweet tarts okay, all so day. I do like the big sweet tarts and I like Chewy Sprees a lot. Those are like my, probably my two favorite Chewy hard candies, but they're kind of chewy. Like they're not, mm, they're, they're not, not hard candy. Yeah. They're like pseudo hard candy. Yeah, I get that. Hard candy taking a, Shot in a big spot. Now the candy bars with that chocolatey, like, I just like chocolate so much. <laughs> and I like chocolate in my whiskey. Not like literal <laughs> chocolate in my whiskey. So for like Although that's not syrup? bad either, but. Ew, I think that'd be not gross. Not chocolate syrup. I'm talking like a piece of chocolate. Like dip it in and mm. then take a bite. Like a little Hershey's. I like bacon in my whiskey. <laughs> well, yeah, that's good too. Like a bacon old fashioned. Yeah. yeah that's, that's solid. That's good. We're going to actually, we're going to tidy this channel up. Let's do we're it. Tighten it up. Tighten it up. Tighten up. Go Titans. Huh? Go Bucks. What? OH. Yeah, no, absolutely <laughs> not. Well, for you, hold on. I thought you were talking about Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I was like, where'd that come from? Oh, no, Bucks, Ohio State. But I was talking about pro football. And I know. you switched to college. I don't care anything about pro football mm. at all.